Okay, there, there. Structure, no, weapon nullifier. Perfect. So do we think, do we think I've made it far enough that I could maybe get a platform down without it getting destroyed? I don't know, seeing as my attentions are pointed this direction anyway, let's, let's just see if I can get it to work. It ain't. But I will try all the same. Let's get a pylon here. And an M rift here inside the shield. Okay, next up. Sniper. 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 I'm taking no chances today. Okay. And then a missile launcher. For the sake of it. There we go. Please give me this. Shield on the platform? Ye maybe. Where my ARG is currently just barely stable. But then again, I'm making an M-Rift, which is always expensive. So maybe, maybe we could afford that. Gosh darn it. How are you getting hit? Don't I have like a billion snipe? Oh, they're sneaking. Oh wait, no, that's not my sniper. Okay. Like I said, it's getting a little dense here. All I need to do is just keep this down. How's this going over here? Actually pretty good. Let's uh let's grab my bombing squad. Okay, I'm gonna shift. We're just gonna start hitting, hitting them where they're spawning from. There it is. Okay, perfect. Special shield. Look at this. It's so cheeky, it finally works. We're safe. What about the efficiency of Berthas? They're worth it. Uh, the main thing is you don't really see the effects, but Berthas are constantly just... Well, I don't actually know. Because now that I think about it, uh, the EMT just immediately jumps back up again. So I think in this case, the Berthas aren't that amazing. In normal maps, they're great, but since the enemy can go up to 10.5 creeper per second or whatever it is, like that's, or effective amount, I don't actually know what EMT stands for. The wild thing is it's not actually dropping off there. Okay, let's take a look at this. So we can absolutely push them back here. I guess it's just being supplied from everywhere else. Yeah, it's a mitt. I guess that makes sense. I'm so used to acronyms that EMT sounds like, well, I don't know. I mean, obviously, EMT is... Oh! No, there's an eye in there! Huh! <laughs> I never saw! I... It's very, very small. Which, admittedly, I did that. But, whatever.
Okay. Well, we pushed them back. And now we've got another anti-creep multiplier of our own. Unfortunately, it's not as good as I was hoping it would be. Okay, I'm going to go back to this one. We're going to... Zero this out a little bit. The main reason why is we don't we don't need these walls up anymore, and I'd prefer to have my anti creep flowing relatively freely. Okay, how much do I have? Twenty one. That did some harm. We just go for the deepest sections. Problem is the deepest sections also have the most amount of eggs. Okay. I've got a terp here. It's working on that. Let's... Scoot these boyos closer. Hook this whole thing up a bit. Let's see, do I get an M rift out here? No. Probably build another. Huh. Are we. For those of you that are very familiar with Creeper World lore, has the uh has the specific story moments where they blew up rift space happened? Or has that not been revealed yet? Uh, let's see. Because I know they mentioned that, and I thought it was during the Saloy period, but I could be wrong. <sighs> okay, well. Oh, my reclaim charge is almost there. Okay, special platform. neutron effect a uh, reactor did affect rift space true but we're clearly still using it because it there's enough plot ish dialogue that implies that uh that stuff happened or stuff is still happening but i i still have access to uh, the m rift I'm just going to get a platform up there. Put a rage sniper on top of that and just hope these guns hold on. Because that's a shit ton of eggs and I need them gone. Maybe... Maybe I don't need to be so hasty, though. You don't know which point rift space was closed. Because I, I thought it was at the end of the Saloy period. But maybe I have to go back and uh, play the first Creeper World. First and second. I'll get to it someday. I just... I feel like the games haven't changed that much, so I'd probably still enjoy them. But visually, it could be a little bit of a, a difficult thing to get into. Let's see, Braxis uses Rift Space, doesn't he? Kind of. What Abraxas does is, like, cheating. Because it's not so much rift space as he becomes multi-dimensional... Creeper Jesus. Oh, look at all those eggs... It can't handle it. Okay, how are we doing? Well, here's what we're going to do. This is a strategy people have been asking 
me to do for a while. So I, I think I'm I'm just gonna commit to it. Oh. Better yet, earn. Earn want. Get out of here, egg. Be gone, egg. It worked for a moment, and then it stopped working, and I'm not entirely sure why. But that's okay. I guess that's just a lot of bad juice just getting chucked my direction. It kind of worked, though. Oh, you know what? I know why it's happening. They're all starting to pop, which increased the amount of creep flowing in on, on my defenses. Where's it going? <laughs> the urn is just like pieced out and has gone elsewhere. I don't know. I'm still just completely random thought. I'm still disappointed they don't let me make urns in this one. They had, there was like one mission where it's like, yeah, you can make urns now. And I'm like, yes, finally. And then they just immediately took it away. And it's like, oh, this is just rude. Okay. Let's get a weapon. Let's get a nullifier. I'll get it right there. Is that something to want urn? Probably. No, I didn't. Like, I have one available urn. It's just... Where are you going, urn? Nothing immediately has, like, a desire for your presence. Or a use for your services. Alright. I don't... I don't get it. Anyway, let's just get a Rage Cannon. Earns for Arg would allow for too much turtle game. Th this game already has enough turtle game. Okay, so media problem. Rage Mortar has just decided that it has a... A... Unending hate. Oh, right. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm sure it's helpful, helpful, but I think I think what we want is one rage gun. Just to keep him off here. Yeah, I know Mortar's aim for the deepest creep in the range. I was just hoping it would hit some of the other stuff instead. I Honestly, can't tell you if this is actually gonna help, though. Because the main problem is this thing puts out 150 creep every half second, but then it hits height cap. I'm probably pushing it back. It's, it's probably actually really worthwhile doing this. Weapon, sprayer. Another sprayer here, yeah? Okay. Let's 
Let's see if it actually works. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we've taken that for my own. How's this area looking? Still nullified. Still deep. There we go. I'm here in time for the most frustrating mission. It's not necessarily frustrating so much as just time consuming. Hey, we got it. Kind of. Sniper, sniper. Okay, how's this looking? It's fine. Let's see. Move these here. I was hoping for this mission, at least, they would give me something like the Thor. Because I straight up never actually got to use the Thor. <laughs> Which, like, ultimately I'm kind of fine with. Uh, I don't need super weapons, especially if it's not going to let me play with them in any of the other missions. But considering how just downright tanky the creep was for this entire mission, it would have helped. But how are we looking? Hey, pushing it back. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something a little a little silly. We can get another M Rift down. Just this way we're not reliant on platforms. Okay. Mortar, 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 mortar. Let's do three mortars and a cannon. But I might want to source the cannon from out here. There we go. What does the beacon do? Completely meaningless. There's certain dark zones on the map that happen sometimes, and... Well, they're not really helpful or terribly relevant here. Oh, they got Rage Cannon. How dare they get Rage Cannon? This probably indicates we need a sniper rifle on this hill. Okay, do we want to get special? We get a shield. Let's hope we get it quick. I just made a serious problem for myself. That sniper rifle, uh, well, I mean, it did its job. And it'll get rid of all of the surpri surprise bonus eggs that we don't want to deal with. Hey, thank you, Cryoris, for the 500 bits. Greetings from the 32nd of December, 2020. No. <laughs> Man. How would that even work? Like, I feel like you could do a speculative, uh... You could do, like, some kind of speculative fiction where a year doesn't end, but how would that even logistically matter? Like, calendars would roll over otherwise. Like, everybody would look at their computers and just be like, what? And then just move on because, like, it, no one would care. <laughs> but I would love to see somebody write that and actually have it be spooky. I just don't know how you could do it from, like, a logistics standpoint without, like, having this winter never end or, like, the sun never rises again and time stops. Like, I, I guess you could have some, like, cheeky things where, yeah, the calendars are all, like, messed with or computers and so on and so forth. Calendars not rolling over would not be the worst thing to happen this year. It's true. 
But, like, at that point, I think everybody would conclusively know that they're cursed. That, like, there is some serious... Just... There's something wrong with the universe. If, like, every calendar in the world mysteriously was just like, Yeah, never mind, you're still stuck in 2020. It's like, what? How? And then we'd probably find out that zombies are real. Resident Evil is a is a documentary. Okay, let's get a let's get a put them down. There we go. I'm just gonna get a platform down on this one because trying to appro approach these emitters just is not worth my time. In fact, I'm not entirely sure why I didn't just try and get a platform. Down next to the other one. Imagine every major event in 2020 just repeating every dang year. I mean, if it's the same stuff and I already know how it goes, I get pretty used to it. Like, I always wonder about that with uh, Groundhog's Day. You know, what would happen if I was stuck in a time loop for who knows how long? How quickly I would become dead to the world. I'm, um... I'm very slowly prepping more video essays to work on uh, as, like, bonus stuff beyond just, you know, streaming and Let's Plays. And one of the scripts that I'm kind of slowly working on is how certain certain video games make me feel like an absolute monster. Uh, thinking about this specifically from the perspective of... Uh, Driving in video games. How many of you, how many of you guys have actually like uh, played like uh, well? I mean, Grand Theft Auto. Let's go with that one. Eh, maybe not Grand Theft Auto because Grand Theft Auto at least has like a consequence system for mowing down people most of the time. But have you ever played like an open world kind of Ubisoft style game where committing crimes? has literally, like, zero consequence. I had this with, uh... Watch Dogs 1, I want to say. Like, there was consequences, but it was minor at best. It was really slow lifting. It's because I only have one green arm mother. It's just comically slow. Uh... But, like, playing, playing Watch Dogs 1, you could, like, drive a car into a restaurant, and everybody would be, like, mildly upset at you. But... It's not like the cops would just immediately come flying out of the woodwork just to shoot you, like they do in GTA. I think they were still aggressive, but it wasn't as bad. It, like, in GTA, murder is very inconsequential, but if you get a high enough star rating, like, it's inconvenient for you. Yeah, Liftic is slow because of the rocket. I have 23 rocket points. I was hoping to use the rocket to kind of clean up after I get all of these. Because if I can take this last emitter then I can go for that last golden point and just convert it until it becomes mine. Like, I bank those as more of a, a last hurrah than anything else. Oh, damn it. Okay, but... Just games that don't give proper consequence systems for, you know, misbehavior has always felt super weird to me. Yeah, Watch Dogs 1 AI plus tools makes dealing with cops comically easy. Like, you need to legit restrict yourself. Exactly! And that's, that's why that game specifically made me feel kind of like a monster, because I actively had to say, no, I'm not going to commit horrific crimes against you know, these NPCs, because just because they're NPCs. Because I've realized, like, yes, they are NPCs. You literally do not need to care about them in any way, shape, or, shape or form. But some part of me feels like, uh... I'm going to develop a neurosis eventually if I'm just, like, constantly like, well, that doesn't matter, they're just an NPC. That... Like, I feel like I'm I'm one 
overly surreal day uh, separating myself from just being like, huh, what does anything matter? And then just like plowing through a crowd of people because they're slightly in my way. Hey, uh, well, I guess that's another option. Also kind of a traffic situation. Playing video games if you've got uh, NPCs just walking around. You know, just kind of milling about standard crowd style. And there's an NPC between you and where you want to go. Do you wait for them to move or do you just plow into them because, like, who gives a shit? Because I, I find more often than not, I will either plow into them or straight up, like, Goomba stomp them on my way to, like, get past them. Undertale Genocide Run. See, the thing is with the Undertale Genocide Run, though, it makes you feel legit guilt uh, for for doing what you do. Like, there, there is very much a... I'm not going to say reward system, but there, there is a, a system in place there to make you not want to do that. Okay, I'm going to do Terraform this to 20. Let's see. So, like, one of the reasons why I never completed the Undertale Genocide run is, like, I was a monster, but it, it made me feel like my decisions were bad. It wasn't moralizing, but it was it was very cleanly cut and dry of, like, this is the bad thing to do, but this character is strictly evil. And so, I, I will say that, like, Undertale has that emotional heft. That really is like, holy shit, I just did bad things. But with these games that I'm kind of describing more loosely, is that I don't feel that. There's nothing there to make me feel guilty for being an absolutely shitty person. And that makes me feel almost guiltier, but in the, like a really detached way of like, man, I'm just a terrible person, aren't I? Uh, and that's... It's very odd. I'm gonna move my rage guns out here. Because I want to lock this off so this one pretty much will never get hit. And then I'm gonna put a rage sniper up here and then try and convert it all. Uh, let's see. Maybe because, as you reflect on it, it sort of touches on the philosophical thought regarding uh, whether or not, or what people would do if consequences didn't exist. Yes. And maybe, maybe that's a very 20, 2020, like, mentality to have. You know, kind of seeing a bunch of people balk at even, like, the barest minimum of, so of social, um, social responsibility. Okay. Do we bother with a raid? Do we do rage sniper or do we just do regular sniper? And so, I guess, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, earn held, earn none. Earn, wait, no. Earn, want, back to this. You have an earn. It's not helping me at all. Earn want. There we go. Yeah, the uncanny valley of morality, where a game resembles reality, but it's just off. I have that problem with immersive games. That, like, the more immersive a, like, first-person, you know real-time action RPG or especially a first-person shooter like the more immersive that gets the the more that really starts to become weird okay so I'm just gonna let this get bad and then we're gonna si singularity it 
Okay, it's getting bad. Bullseye. This is why I wanted to save all of this. Don't count your eggs before they hatch. Okay, there we go. And that's pretty much all the eggs in the area, and we're left with a actually fairly ample amount of anti-creeper to just utilize here. Sweet deals. these up a little bit. Hopefully this pylon gets built before this gets bad. How many more orbitals do I have? Plenty. Perfect. Oh, that's a beacon. I'm looking in the wrong category. That would explain some things. So Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, I'll admit that's that's where the impetus for this idea came from. Of just like, man, I'm just a horrible person. As I plowed through a crowd of people because they're in my way. Between me and a mugging that I wanted to stop. And just the sheer incongruity of that action uh, has bothered me for, I think... When did... Like, ever since the game came out. Because that was like two or three days in. Uh, to that that game coming out and just being like, man, what the hell did I just do? It's very rare for a game to actually make me sit there and be like, wait, how, just how monstrous was that action right there? And then beyond that, it was it was two twofold. One, they weren't doing anything. There was nobody to mug. They just had a briefcase. I don't think there were any NPCs even remotely close to them, so it was just very much like a, not a victimless, victimless crime, but like, really just kind of excessive on my end. Where are my planes hitting? I haven't even paid attention to what they've been up to all of today. Okay. Let's just bomb that. Uh, let's see. But beyond that, if I finish it, I get like maybe 50 bucks. And a just trash tier gun. And I had to sit there and think to myself, man, why did I do that? <laughs> what was the justification for this, this horrid activity that I just did? And the answer is video games, which just felt really strange. Sims is genuinely one of the easiest games to torture people for entertainment with no consequences. Yup. I've certainly done it. I did the, uh, I did the pool with no ladder and the starving artist in the basement. Uh, somehow getting the the family. You know, all of their money so nobody would have to work. Just gonna chain a bunch of this. Because that's also a very good way of getting rid of things. My gun is MVP, holding it alone on the enemy base. There's not a whole lot of, uh... Well, there's not a whole lot of base left, so it's not super hard, but yeah. That didn't actually work there. Let's see. Rain might be more effective. For this, I don't know, because the thing is, uh, the moment an egg is outside of a creep zone, uh, they immediately will pop. And so, rain will definitely, like, get rid of the creep, but it doesn't get rid of the eggs as well, I think. Is he still playing the Razor map? Yup. This map is very long. Because effectively, I had to fight three times as much creep as I normally would.
Trapped my character's spouse in a doorless room till it starved to death. That's horrible. Like, no wiggle room on that one. That is like full on evil thing to do. And I totally understand why you would do it in The Sims. Hey, did we get a malt? No. We still have to nullify the skimmer fi factory. I guess I think about this especially often in regards to like planning D&D &D campaigns. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have ever played with like a that guy. I'm sure you have. I'm sure anybody that's ever played D&D has played with a that guy at some point or at least come close to one of them. Um, but, you know, I'm planning a new campaign, writing out details, NPCs, and it's just like, I wonder what would happen if just like my players were monsters. How how much could I tolerate that before I just can the campaign and be like, I'm just not playing D&D with you guys anymore. Don't want to do it. it. Sounds spooky. They hate murder hobo parties. Murder hobos can be fine if they're not actually going around murdering people. That's that's the deal. Think fast. Neuron. Okay. We got a couple more maps. That said, that one took a little while and definitely sapped a little bit of my stamina. So maybe I want to switch to other things. Yeah, one more world or next game? Gotta find out. 